You know, no one protects us. No one's going to take care of us. And this is the big thing that astrology, I think, teaches us too. That no one is going gonna, is gonna to take care of you but you in the end. And don't expect anyone to. Now, this is Saturn girl talking, right? Ultimately, we're all alone. Ultimately, we're all alone. And all you have is you. The Buddha said, learn to be your own refuge. Because who else could be your refuge? So the more we learn to be at home in our own sense of being, the more we'll be able to cooperate with things as they are because we militate against things as they are. And I always say 99% of life is just fated. It just happens to us. We don't have a choice in the matter. But the 1% is the choices we make is the choice where to put our attention. In the end, all we have is our attention. Because where our attention goes, there we go. Right? It's a very sad realization, but no, it's not. It's not a sad realization. It's a very happy one. Because if there only is one life, if we all are interconnected, and we, if we all do share a common source of divine origin, as we tend to accept, right? Then we're all alone. Then there is only alone, right? All there is is aloneness. And ultimately, one is nothing, according to certain traditions. One is the loneliest number that you'll ever do. Two can be as bad as one. It's the loneliest number since the number one. Right? So. And I'm not being morbid about this. I'm just saying the only recourse you have in life is exploring your own sense of consciousness, your own inner space. The only thing I preach in terms of spirituality is learn to fix your attention on the sensation of being you. I'm not talking about mental questions. I'm not talking about like, I wonder if I'm this. I wonder if I'm that. Who am I? I'm Frankie. I'm Saturn girl. I'm transgender. I'm a parent. I'm an astrologer. I'm a mason. I'm, you know, all these things, they all die with your body, unfortunately. So that's where we have to have a little sensitivity, some curiosity, and some will. The will to penetrate into the unknown. And the unknown is your inner space. It's your own sense of consciousness. The fact that you're here, the fact that you're here now, that's the most amazing thing. That's the most mysterious thing. You don't need aliens or Atlantis or secret teachings, right? Or any of these stupid things, twin flames. You don't need that to explore your inner space. Whence does the sense of I arise? What is that? How peculiar. How peculiar that you have a localized sense of self through thoughts, feelings, and sensations. Isn't that wild? And the only thing you know for sure is what? I'll tell you. You are here. It's the only thing you know for sure. We all have an opportunity to explore that, and most of us never do, and we just pass away, and that's that. And we just go back to dirt and dust and whatever. But we also have an opportunity, if we so wish, to remember ourselves and get to know the nature of this thing, this machine in the world, and what's motivating it. And the machine is out of your control. 
right? You have very, you can't control your thoughts, feelings, or sensations. If you try and suppress them, you'll get sick. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about trying to force yourself into a mold, like a good little yogi, like I thought I had to be for many years in the spiritual community. I had to be like this. I had to meditate every day. You know? I didn't smoke for like 12 years or 10 years or something like that. You know? Um, life is messy. Development is messy. People are messy. And our expectations don't belong to us. They're acquired in life, aren't they? They're acquired in life through other people and identifications and things that aren't even us in the first place. And we get so rigid and defensive about these things and they have nothing to do with us, do they? Right? So again, all that I'm hinting at here is learn to see ourselves not just as this or that or whatever, but to feel the sensation of being here because that sensation is what we take for granted. And that sensation is the background upon which everything else happens. It is. And you can see that it's so by watching it. All we have to do is learn to look. And over time, that's what lets the light in. Because you can't suppress your stuff. You can't force yourself to change. You won't do it. You won't. I promise you. I'm sure you've tried. So what do we do? We learn our patterns. We observe ourselves. We learn to look. We learn to fix our attention on being here. Feel the air on our skin, right? The breath exiting our nostril. Taste our water. Taste our food. Chew, right? We're so busy, 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 busy. And it's easy for me to say now that I have a small business, but I had a conventional job for 20 years. And so we're always racing, 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 racing to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. Out. We're stuck in our heads, right? Racing towards things that haven't happened yet. Expectations. Expectations are based on the past. They're not real. They're patterns. They're patterns. So if we want to distance ourselves from our patterns, we have to learn to become an observer. Like Plato said, to become a spectator of time is a cure for meanness of soul. And a spectator observes things rather than getting sucked into them, rather than getting sucked into the drama. And after a while, when we see ourselves enough, then we start thinking, it, we become less personal. It's more impersonal. We start saying, oh, there she goes again. Those patterns. And even though I'm a nasty person, admittedly so, I would be even worse if I hadn't done this work. Because what happens after enough seeing is you get space between yourself and the behavior or the stuff. And the behavior eventually falls away because we see it and we distance ourselves and we, become, we get distant from it. See? Oh. Again, I hope that's useful stuff, but I felt compelled to say it because it's the one, fuck, the one darn thing that I preach in terms of spirituality and all that because I don't consider... I don't even consider this spirituality. I call it that because that's the way you make it palatable to people. But this is just existence. This is just learning to understand our own existence. Because that alone is wild. Like, I'm here. It's wild, isn't it? Anyway, I gotta go. Amber's going to be pissed at me now. So Amber, I did this to you. I made, I did this other little 45 minute section to punish you. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I did not. <clears throat> but anyway, I love you all very much and thank you. Like the stream, please. I really do appreciate it. I'm just in a very bad mood. This really didn't go well. <laughs> so, you know, I love you.